Hello, my name is Steve Olson. I'm the manager of training services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to share a simple how to, um, in this case, how to make an iPart. This is an example that I share quite frequently in class. In case you're not familiar, an iPart is the ability to drive multiple di co different configurations through a table uh, of a single part file. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just start a fairly simple part file with, with a normal sketch. And also, one thing I do quite frequent, frequently when I make these I parts, I'll actually give my dimensions meaningful names, and you'll see why that will be helpful in a minute. So I'm going to say length equals, we'll go 10. And by the fact I put length equals 10, um, that dimension, instead of being the normal D0, D1 number, will now be called length, and you'll see that when in my parameters. I'm going to hit tab, I'll say width equals 5. So now I have this, I'll finish my sketch, and go into my extrusion, and here I'll say thickness equals 0.25. Okay, so real quickly here, if I look at my parameters, you'll see that my length, width, and thickness values all have meaningful names because I said length equals 10, width equals 5, etc., etc. It's a really easy way to name your parameters. And naming your parameters will come in very handy here once we get into the table because sometimes you won't remember what D0 is, you won't remember what D1 is, but by, by the fact that I called it length and width, they will show up as those values in my table here in a second. So let me save this real quick. I'll just name it iPart. So now I'm going to go to my Manage tab. I'm going to use Create iPart. You can see here on my table that length, width, width, and thickness are already showing up. If for some reason thickness I don't need anymore, in this upper pane here, I, you can see I can select thickness and use this arrow head to remove it. If for some reason I forgot a value or didn't pick up a value or there's a D value that, that I wanted to use but didn't get picked up, I can easily grab it from this parameters tab here underneath the feature and then use the double arrow head to add it to the table. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a couple different rows. Just if you click, right click in this front cell there, you can add a couple different rows. And I'll just change some values here real quick. Okay, so now, once I have that, you'll see here that uh, I now have a table line item in my browser. If I expand it out, it will uh, each row of that table will be represented there. So if I double click, you can see that gets a little bit bigger. And then if I change it again, this one will get longer because this was the 12 inches wide. Okay. So now this also works well with features. So let me just add like a little notch to the one corner to show you how to suppress or, or unsuppress that. So let's say I come to this corner here. I'm going to create a new sketch. And I'll just make a little notch here. I'll make it. Uh, make it one. Uh, let's make it two by two. Just tell it to cut through all. There we go. So now I have a feature there, and if I if I look through all of those, because I had uh, added that to the model, every single row is going to be um, include that. So now there's a possibility of maybe only one or two of those need to include that. How do I do that? So I'm going to go back to my table here. I'm going to go to the suppression tab and grab this extrusion 2 and add it to my table. You see right now it says compute, compute, compute. Um, I can actually go to let's say the, the maybe the second row doesn't need it. So I could either use suppress with a capital S 
Um, another thing that works here is ones and zeros for off and on. Uh, the words off and on, capital C, capital S, lowercase c, lowercase s. There are lots of different options here. Uh, I prefer off and on personally, but um, you know the compute suppress is the way it was forever, and then. Um, in, in more recent releases, they've added the ability to do those other ones there. So I'm going to add that feature there. So now, if I look at the second occurrence, you'll see that that feature is removed. Uh, if I look at the table real quick here, you'll see that um, there's different properties, so I can add different part number descriptions for each of these. I could even add the material and change those. Uh, suppression, again, I features. I made some different thread features. If you have a threaded hole, uh, that will become very handy if you're changing the size to change the thread designation. So lots of different things we can do here. I just wanted to give you a quick little how-to to get started. Uh, a lot more options there, but I, I don't want to overwhelm you at this point. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me at my email address on the screen. And again, thank you for watching.